Hello everybody. So, another weekend, another adventure. Just getting my car warmed up, hoping to test out my GoPro, which is right there, and hoping to meet another Lincoln Town Car aficionado, an owner and a mechanic at a Ford dealership. You know, have a lot of hopes for this day and let's see yep still works let's jump on in and also wanted to kind of check the real difference Oops. between the cell phone which I'm shooting this first segment on and everything else that I'm hoping to get this thing set up all right let's see how it how it goes all right so the more and more I use <laughs> this little GoPro more and more ways I find for creative little things to kind of put in my videos and one of the things I which I, I start you know loving is doing these little time lapse and time warp videos just to kind of spice things up so before I used to I used to do it too, but obviously I would need to film the entire thing, and then use the software to kind of uh, you know to to speed it up or sometimes slow it down. This feature, now what it generally does, I mean it records the whole time, but it kind of puts it all together. So we will see how that goes, and I'll be switching over for the next segment. To the GoPro. We'll see you when we get there. Alrighty, so here we go. I think I see a big Ford sign right up right up front that's got to be it not a whole lot else happening around here so let's see if we can find that youtuber and Lincoln Town Car owner and driver let's see First of all, coming, coming in when the dealership is open, that's always news to me. So let's see, what do we got? What do we got? Hello everybody. This video is gonna be uh, brought to you by two folks. Uh, one, one person is uh, rich, nice enough to help me shoot this video and maybe provide some input. This will be my take on what to look for when buying a new town car. I was a total noob at this uh, when I bought it. I've been dreaming about these cars for many years. Not just town cars, Mercury, Grand Marquis, Crown Vicks, uh, Cadillacs, Buicks, that, that's my thing. All the cars that I drove before, uh, they were cars. This is a passion for me. And finally, I decided to pull the gun, and I ended up with this one. After looking at probably four to five different town cars, I do have some pictures. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't shoot any videos of them, but they, they came to me in a variety of flavors, trims, and also a variety of problems uh, that I ended up settling on this one because this one had the least amount of problems, at least in my inexperienced mind. So. First and foremost, obviously, you know, when buying a new car, look at the overall condition. Obviously, all used cars are gonna be scratched up, bumped into, I'm no exception. Uh, this one, you know, has some cosmetic stuff. All these grills usually very often break. My, my, mine is no exception, there's cracks, but that's all minor stuff, so like right there. I didn't do anything, I mean, yes, I, could, I can replace this part, but at the same time, I work in the city, I park in the streets, every once in a while somebody bumps into me and I think that's probably what ended up happening here somebody tried to cover some stuff up I don't know uh, that doesn't bother me for whatever reason 
Uh, so there will be an, another segment where uh, both Rich and I will talk about pretty much the same thing. It's uh, corrosion. Uh, you can see kind of my, my effort of trying to cover it up. But my paint and my primer, that was really cheaply done by me. I don't want to pay anybody. Maybe someday I, I will. Uh, but if you uh, watch another segment about that uh, blue uh, 06, also 06 Lincoln Town Car, uh, you'll see a lot of <laughs> other very similar, different to rim style, but, but very same. I also want to warn you about these. When buying, when buying a new town car, a lot of them will not have these wheel hub covers. And you, you might think, oh, it's a decorative piece. Not a big deal. I'll pick it up. Here's a warning. These things, brand new, if you, if you, if you can still find them brand new, they will run you probably about $50 to $60 a piece. If you go on eBay, yeah, you might score them for 30 or so. But if you are missing 04 and you're one of the people like, like me, like I, I can't not have them, keep in mind, you, that might add an additional, you know, $180 to $200 of cost just for getting four of these. So there's that. Uh, let's move along here. Um, so you might notice the, the whole two-tone paint job. And this is a result of my inexperience because when I bought the car, it had the four uh, chrome trim pieces on all four corners of the car. They looked nice. There was no bubbling. And, you know, inexperienced side of me thought that there was no rust, at least not in, not in this fashion. And what ended up happening about three months into owning the car, the trim piece is really nice and covering up the rust that's happening underneath, which is basically it's bubbling. So if I knew that better, all I had to do at the time, just tap right here and a bunch of stuff would come out or a bunch of dirt in my case right now. And had I known that, I would have known that these trim pieces, uh, they love hiding that. So make sure you keep an eye on for any underside rust and in particular here in the back. And here is what ends up happening, just so that you guys know, I'm going to pop this. Somehow, the way that this car is designed, there is water that flows through, through these quarter panels sometimes. I don't know how it does that, but it's supposed to drain out in there. Well, when I first bought the car, I had no idea that the drain, well, it's not a plug, but it's like a channel it was clogged up i had no idea it existed none of my other cars that i ever owned had this it's probably a kind of unique maybe panther platform design but the bottom line is whoever you know i'm the fourth owner based on carfax somebody didn't know that i definitely didn't know that and yeah so there was probably water in there from before ended up costing me about you know 800 bucks to get both sides fixed they cut a piece out so anyway just that's my experience, but your experience should be checked for rust on both both sides. Uh, in the back, nothing really to look for. Once again, if you're anal retentive like me, make sure all the letters are there. Uh, <laughs> these are pretty easy to score, uh, not not that big of a deal. Um, let's see on this side, yeah, nothing really. Oh, if your car has a sunroof, these have a tendency to leak. And in my case, it happened about six months probably into ownership. And what ends up happening is probably if the sunroof is original, the gasket gives out and the water starts falling inside, obviously, and it starts spreading. I caught it very early enough where a drop of water landed on my head and I acted immediately. I've, I have a bunch of videos on it. I did everything from flex sealing the thing together. I used a lot of different weird stuff now in retrospect i probably shouldn't have done half of it i should have probably just replaced the gasket once again i never had a sunroof that week i had plenty of cars with us with a sunroof same time i never had a 14 to 15 year old car with a sunroof they were much newer than that so there you go so make sure to look for and the easiest way to do that is right up here and i can actually probably do it so right up here there is a tray where my hand is going and when you are buying the car, all you gotta do, just put your hand in there. And unless you live in Arizona, or unless you live somewhere where it rains, you know, every, every once in a blue moon, if you live in the Midwest where it rains and snows pretty frequently, chances are there will be water in there. Uh, I never did this when, when I bought the car, once again, didn't really think about it. And I don't think it leaked at the time of me buying. I think the gasket deteriorated a little bit, a little bit after. All right, so, Let's move right here. 
and obviously you gotta make sure that the hood ornament is there. If you're buying a car without a hood ornament, make sure you prepare for like 80 to $100, whatever these things cost. Because these cars without a hood ornament, it's not a, it's not a real town car. Oh, uh, right here. <laughs> uh right here so what do we have here besides some dust and dirt no keep in mind the person who's filming it he is the mechanic <laughs> i'm not um well the only thing that i could uh, that i could tell you is what i've done is i replaced this this part right here it's uh rich help me out here this it's, some, the, it's a recycling of uh, exhaust it's your uh evaporative vapor management valve basically what it does is that any any head vapor that's in the on on top of the fuel in the fuel tank mm -hmm. This will open and it will allow vacuum to be pulled on this uh, solenoid. So whenever the solenoid opens, it will pull vacuum on the opposite side and it will actually suck through and it will pull any of that excessive vapor and recycle it back into the manifold so it can be used as fuel. Okay, all right, I appreciate that. Uh, so also, if I can ask you for a favor, maybe just if we switch the cameras, maybe you spend just a couple minutes from a mechanic's perspective, just talk a little bit about what to look for because once again, I am a noob. So the first thing that I want to point out is focus your attention to the intake manifold area. The aluminum runner here around the plastic, it, it will leak. Uh, they made an update in on this manifold in about 02, 03. And this is the updated manifold, but even the updated manifold can leak. Uh, another and, and I'm sorry to interrupt. You mentioned before that it looks like mine did leak at one point. At one point, you can see right around this runner there is some coolant corrosion but it has stopped and it has not leaked yet since it's there's no further uh evidence of wet around that at all so it basically self-sealed itself <laughs> knock on okay i don't have any yeah. wood knock on this <laughs> there's a coolant tube that runs underneath this manifold mm -hmm. you can't see it because the uh -huh. alternator is blocking it but there's a, a coolant tube that goes underneath the manifold and it plugs into the front of the block and that tube it basically rots out and if you look down in a hole you can see down in the hole if it's wet inside the valley and this one is dry it's not it hasn't done anything like that what a lot of guys have done to alleviate that is they've actually found a way to, to they remove the alternator they snip the tube they mm -hmm. pull it out from the back over here they feed it out and then they run their own tube with an elbow they actually make their own coolant hose with an elbow and they put it in from the front and they mm -hmm. run it along this and secure it so they never have to go back inside that manifold again. Okay. Do it. All right. Uh, there's a way to do it. Well, uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate that. Here, here's my take. Here's my take on the whole thing. Don't do what I did. Don't just get excited about a car, go check it out, and then the bind. Bring somebody like Rich here, who's a, either a mechanic, which is the best thing to do, or somebody who is more handy or more knowledgeable than uh, than you are. I did not do any of that. Uh, had I brought somebody more experienced, chances are they would have pointed out a few things. I'm happy to know that stuff, whatever used to leak, doesn't leak anymore. Not to say it can't start leaking tomorrow or on the way home. But yeah, that's my suggestion. Uh, also have the car, ask a car to be jacked up. I did not ask for that. I got too excited, too happy. I was happy to get rid of my Hyundai Elantra at the time. <laughs> and I was like, and uh, I mean, I, t I did test drive it. I, I noticed that it wasn't leaking. Like I did, I, I usually, when they, when they brought the car, I saw where they pulled it out of. I did go back there and check if there was any leaks on the floor. I didn't see any. I obviously don't know how long the car was sitting there either, but I didn't do any of that. So now in retrospect, yeah, I should have probably caught the rust that I mentioned. And maybe if there was something uh, at the time, um, I, I would have caught it with a more experienced person with me. Other than that, I think mechanically, yes, I, I invested some money in it from stuff that broke during my ownership. But so far it hasn't, thank God, hasn't broke the bank and I hope it, it won't keep, it, it will keep this way. So here's that. All right, let's just uh, do a few things here on the interior and then we'll wrap it up. Um, because I did look at a couple different um, uh, town cars before settling on this one, here is what I noticed. A lot of these pop out. And it looks like this one did pop out at some point. This is not my doing. Had it been me, I would not have used the Gorilla Glue to do it. But hey, at least, you know, tan, kind of orangey tan color. Hey, you know, they try to color match, right? Um, here's another thing right up here is maybe I can point this out. 
uh, the seat wear. So in Rich's segment, if you guys are following both of us, um, you know, you can kind of see the both sides of the wear. My wear consisted of just the, the, the leather losing its color. This is me trying to color match the best of my ability. I, I did not do a very good job. Another thing, uh, so yeah, the seat, the seats will be caved in. Unless somebody weighs like 50 pounds and, and you know, the little old grandma going to church type of deal, and I'm talking for real, not a story, these seats will be caved in. I was lucky enough to get that seat not caved in. This seat was pretty bad and it drove me nuts. I'm not the whitest person in the world. And yes, I was hidden the, the springs or not even the springs, but whatever is underneath the seat, whatever module, <laughs> I was hitting that and it was not very pleasant. So got a couple segments on this. I stuffed this thing to the point of no return. I could barely get the leather wrapped around it as I was doing it. I, I thought I was going to be in trouble, but uh, but thankfully it worked. So yes, the seats are, are now super plush, but had you seen them before, if I was filming the videos before that, uh, then you would have seen it. Another thing that I'll, very often is broken on these is the middle console. You, got, you can see all my, all my crap in there where these things I did test drive one of them and the first thing that happened when I when I sat down I put my elbow down and the whole thing just slipped and I almost like fell in on the other side these are not very expensive there's plenty of of these things at um like a pick and pull which which I did visit and there's should be a video on that in the next couple weeks uh but yeah these things get broken all the time I don't know why but they they are I mean, other than that, I know the whole thing about the, the blend doors um, where, you know, it, it will only blow on, uh, you know, in one side, like you can't change uh, where the, the air blows. I have something that's happening to this car. It's it's minor, but it takes my car a couple, uh, maybe 30 seconds to a minute for me to switch and see if I want it to blow uh, on my feet versus, you know, out of, out of the, you know, let's say out of this vent here. Yeah, I know of these issues. I know you got to pull apart the dash. I am not willing <laughs> to invest my time, money, and, and energy yet. So it is what it is. It's fine. And um, these things, they make a little noise too. You know, a lot, yeah, a yes, lot. They, they creak like. <laughs> right, when you go to shut them off and as the vacuum starts to bleed down, mm -hmm. that sound is a lot of that stuff coming back to its resting position mm -hmm. and that creaking is everything moving as the vacuum bleeds off. So a lot of people when they come here, like a lot of the old ladies and stuff, the little, little old men, like why is my dash making that sound? That's yeah. normal. I mean, that's that's something that as you get older, you probably uh, may, maybe it's something that that you were used to back in the day because you drove the car every day. Mm -hmm. But as you get older, you don't drive it as much. A lot of these people let these vehicles sit. They come mm -hmm. in with sixty, seventy, eighty thousand miles. And they don't drive them a lot and they're not used to those sounds anymore and they think something's wrong it's absolutely normal but you're right that that is a problem that they have yeah. on switching between modes and actually temperature and uh it's a bear sometimes you actually have to pull the dash out to get to some things yes i've seen some videos on a couple people doing that and i am yeah once again it's not a big deal i usually just leave it alone it works i don't have any problem switching the temperature but yeah switching between zones is fine all right and i'm gonna leave you at at the last thing wanted to mention in particular about the driver's door all doors can sag on these things it all depends on on the wear and tear in the car and the mileage and what it was actually used for if you are buying an x you know livery vehicle chances are the rear door is going to sag uh, and definitely the drivers as well so when i bought the car once again i did not pay too close attention the door was sagging really bad uh no no i shouldn't say that it it started it was sagging and then as i started using the car daily and obviously this is the most used door uh, it started sag more and more. I have a bunch of videos on that of all the problems that I encountered But the bottom line is check for the check for this particular door sag. It's not a big fix uh, It wasn't it ended up not being not being expensive uh, for me either But if you're a type of person where you where you slam the door you want to hit you know You want you want to hear metal on metal there you definitely don't want to hear metal on metal right here. It will destroy paint. It will destroy whatever trim. I know some people that have the chrome uh, pillars right here. It will break off the pillars, I'm pretty certain. And my side, and in my case, it just stripped the paint a little bit. I covered it all up and now it's working fine. And, and I'm, I'm happy as hell. How did so, you end up fixing it? A uh, combination of changing um, the hinges and taking it to a body shop. So just so you guys know what he's talking about is these in here have been worked on yeah so these are replacement hinges. these are new sometimes if these aren't worn um, one of the ways to check this is you can come over to the side of the door 
and try to grab the bottom here and pull on it and see if there's play if there's play you'll feel it in the pins if there's no play there's good news to that though you can take a jack with a 4x4 or a 2x4 and put it right underneath the door very carefully don't go don't get crazy with it because you will screw it up and you can put just a little bit of pressure on the bottom of that door and you can actually lift it if there's no play this is the only way i would do it if there's no play lift it and you could actually like bend it back into its original spot maybe some sometimes somebody hung on the door or People somebody use added, it as, as prop to get in and out yeah it's, that's that's the worst thing you can do yeah. all right oh let's wrap it up oh, one last thing leaks i already mentioned the sunroof leaks rich in his video mentioned a lot of other ways to leak yes this this was leaking i did not know cars leak to be honest with you i never had a car that leaked i had older cars i had a even my 97 chevy cavalier didn't leak but it was like four or five years old at the time of, of me owning it yes bunch of ways it can leak i got a bunch of videos on, uh, on how it can leak rich has a bunch of videos how it can leak there's probably hundreds if not thousands of videos how it can leak in my case there there was a leak before i bought it uh there's rust on the on the seat rails that's your first giveaway i did not know that i saw the rust on the on the thing and i just thought it's an old car it didn't come to me that how same it thing on mine too rust okay there you go so you know two people telling you the same thing trust me these things leak a thousand different ways it can leak most common is what rich mentioned in his segment in my case it leaked through the sunroof so i already talked about this it leaked between this plastic piece and the glass this is my job of sealing it up on the other side the previous owner probably sealed it up too and what ends up happening is, as we all know water ends up being here in my case thank god it's been dry for the last several months but this is the giveaway and if 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 the only thing you're gonna do is just pick off one of these plastic things and look right here if you see if you see anything that looks like this it's either a it leaked before and got fixed which is the best case scenario or worse yet it's been leaking here's my suggestion take it through a car wash you know tell, tell the person who you're buying it from or uh if you are buying it at a dealership that should be easy but yeah go with the person through a car wash pay for the most expensive most powerful car wash usually 15 to 20 dollars at a gas station take it through it yeah check the sunroof check check the floor check in the front and rear it leaks depending on where the water comes in this from from up here it's going to end up in different places on on the bottom check in the trunk too open open the trunk if there's water in the trunk <laughs> well once again now you probably won't be able to figure out where it's leaking from at the time of you trying to make a decision but you, what you will do number one you'll know it's leaking that will help you get the price down and yeah prepare yourself from anywhere from five dollars to create a, a self-made gasket to possibly a couple hundred dollars to maybe if, if your car is really rotten to a couple thousand dollars because you you might I've seen Panther cars where there's a hole through the floor and people just weld an extra steel piece and they fix it that way. But that's a very good thing to negotiate. All right, guys, to wrap it up, these cars are awesome. Uh, we both love them. There's tons of people. There's a big community of, of not just town cars, but Panther cars uh, in general. And yeah, if you make a decision to buy one, just have some money set aside, have some patience. It's, it's, it's a project car. A lot of the, not this particular one, but all these cars you're buying at the very least nine nine year old car so whatever nine year old civics don't really last that good either so if you're buying one of these just be ready i hope you guys like them you know like us subscribe us we're trying for you and for ourselves we'll see you next time